Manning cast doing Tennessee, Florida, and Ole Miss LSU. I think you would agree that this wouldn't be happening if not for the SEC's alignment with ESPN. I think you would agree this is good for the conference. It's what the H, and it's brought to you by our friends at Herald Group Security Solutions, leadership experience specialization, addressing problems through unique mission-specific mitigation techniques, making your children safer one school at a time. We've seen about the tragedies recently, so you need to go Herald Group Security Solutions to help make sure that your workplace and your children's school is safer. Go to the administrator at your company or your kid's school. Say Herald Group Security Solutions. This Manning cast doesn't happen if Tennessee had signed a multi-pronged deal with other networks like the Big Ten has. So will you at least give me, before I ask you if it's a complete, uh, if you were completely wrong, will you at least give me, this is super cool and doesn't happen with any of the other networks like CBS. Fair? Fair. It's amazing for the fans. Love it. Okay. But uh, no, no, I won't even give you that because I will say that actually, I know I'm, I'm, I'm retracting already. Fox has deals. You don't think, I mean, Tom Brady actually has a contract with Fox. What happens if there's a Brady cast next year for Fox sports one games? I mean that you, you think they can't somebody, do this? Well, somebody's going to copy it, but I think the two, and I, I thought you might get to that. I think the two are incredibly unique. Peyton and Eli. I don't know that it's watchable with a lot of people like 99% of the population I would probably rather watch the Ole Miss LSU game with my dog. So I don't know that there are a lot. Brady may be great on TV, but the chances are he's not going to be. Let, let's not sell Peyton Manning short. He went to Saturday Night Live, and I was like, this is going to be a – and this goes so far back, You, you we were probably young, probably didn't have a, opinions going in. But when he was on Saturday Night Live, I thought this guy's going to blow it and look like a goofball. Uh, he, he he did other public things, and he's just backed that up that I was exactly wrong. This guy is so smooth and good on camera because of his preparation. I don't know. There's there's a lot of dudes that can do that that are former athletes, maybe Michael Strahan. I also don't think there's, there's anybody that has the brother sort of relationship thing going on. So I think that's pretty special, right? I'll give you that. I think Peyton Manning is uniquely more talented. I, look, I've been I'm, I've been saying this with the Manning cast for a long time, though, because you say the brother relationship. I think Eli almost devalues the Manning cast. He's not good on the Manning cast. He's just not. And so I actually, well, and I, kinda, I do kind of agree with that. Yeah, and so I'm sorry. This is throwing Eli a bone. This is this should be Peyton Manning show. And look, Peyton and Tom would be better together. Honestly, I said this. Yeah, if you it's guys have ever watched you're, prob you're probably right. Sorry to interrupt. Go ahead. No, it's okay. And if you've ever watched the movie Trainwreck, uh, LeBron's in it with some cameos. LeBron's actually really funny. And I've always called for a Manning, when LeBron retires, a Manning James cast where they both together call NFL and NBA games. Like, you know, there's so, there's so many business decisions and relationships that go into these things that there's always a reason. I'm surprised the LeBron thing hasn't happened yet because he's had his pick of the stars that he would. Most he's waiting until get he retires, on. though. He's gonna have to retire first, though. Yeah, I mean, you think, think you make a couple of hours right in the beginning of the year? I mean, LeBron but, is so committed to his body, though. It's it's kind of insane. To stay. he's got that Tom Brady level of commitment, almost like Will Chamberlain was committed to other bodies. <laughs> so, um this is this is super cool, and I think that getting into the and they're also going to by by the way do the uh, LSU Ole Miss game, which for, you know for those that have lived on this side of the conference forever, that that is a monster rivalry. I mean, Ole Miss Huge. hates LSU, and LSU hates Ole Miss, and um, I mean it. It's not Alabama Auburn, and I don't think any rivalry is, but it's pretty darn close. Just like uh, you know. Tennessee has too many rivals. That's part of the problem. They don't they don't have that one that stands out, in my opinion. It depends on where you were born. But not to get sidetracked. Um, I think it's super cool. And I think um, – I also believe that ESPN is going right or wrong, and it probably cost Peyton Manning the Heisman. So this is irony at its height. I believe they're going to be able to manipulate who wins the Heisman. 
I believe they're going to show highlights at certain times and they're going to be able to do things because the sports center is still your go-to. That may not be 10 years from now. No, it's, it's not. I'm pushing it is, back on you. No, it's not. It is my go-to as it is. I mean, I, I, Sports Center every single one because we have the DVR records and that's what I'm going to watch to make sure I'm caught up. Oh my gosh, Dave is like talking like it's 2001. Okay, but let me finish. Let me finish. You're you're younger than me. Um, you don't have kids yet. When you have kids, things change, and you you don't watch sports for three or four hours a night, um, like I used to. So you got to get caught up, especially if you're hosting an award winning show like this one with you, who knows a lot and probably more than me at times. So I, I. I think you're going to have the inside track to the Heisman. I think you're going to control the narrative more if you're on ESPN. How much money am I willing to give up for that? Probably not as much as they did compared to the Big Ten TV contract. I'll give you that. But I'm willing to give up some, aren't you? No. Some. Not at all. Nope. None. None. And by the way, okay. also, you keep talking about e- I- I see, like getting back to the Manning cast. We benefit as fans of this because this is going to be great. It'll be great TV. Again, so replace Eli. You can find somebody better than Eli. He's not good at this. But anyways, it's still I still like the Manning cast overall. You almost get the feeling, not to interrupt your thought, that Eli doesn't really like doing it. There's I times where I just... watch. There's times where I watch him. And he's like, all these damn cameras in my office. You know what Eli is? Do you ever remember those? Not the ones where he was utterly ridiculous because Will Ferrell had a lot of ridiculous skits in SNL. Remember those SNL clips where Will Ferrell was like almost super normal but would say something ridiculous but would have no concept that but would say it's super normal sounding and super dry sounding and it was just like hilarious? Yes. That's Eli. Where it's like he says stuff and he's like so dead serious. You're like, wait, was he making a joke there? I can't tell. And that's fully Eli. So what I was going to say is this helps the fans. This doesn't help the SEC at all. Dave ESPN didn't shell out one extra dime for this. This helps ESPN. They are the winners in this, not the SEC. They fleeced the SEC. They paid for the rights to to the SEC. And now they're like, not only are we going to pay for the rights, we're going to broadcast you on multiple networks with different casts. And we don't have to pay an extra dime for it. The ESPN... They, this is going to save ESPN. ESPN is a sinking ship. They fleece the SEC so hard, they're going to be saved. That alone right. is going to save them. So on our message board, Robert says, Eli needs weed. I'm not sure about that, but I can tell you the Hemp House is the premier hemp dispensary online with a wide variety, great selection, and strict standards to ensure you only receive the best CBD or Delta products. Hemp House chat with two T's.com. Impulse chat with two T's.com. I don't know if he needs weed or like a stimulant. No, he um, needs cocaine. <laughs> Not that I'm advocating for that on the show. Get the guys, <laughs> get that man some Molly and see what happens. Oh my um, gosh, Eli old Molly. That sounds absolutely terrible. I love it. I love the fact that this happens. I disagree with you. I don't think it 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 happens. I love that it happened. I didn't say that I don't love that it happened. It's awesome that it's happening. I'm saying it's not helping the SEC. ESPN doesn't pay what it's helping ESPN and the fans. The SEC should have negotiated more money out of this. They should go back to the drawing board now and say, because you're putting up on us on multiple networks, we need at least some of the revenue for advertising that you're going to bring in. But I don't know. Okay. But uh, okay. But now if you're a college football fan, okay. And you're not tied to a conference and you have a game packaged like Tennessee, Florida, and then you have, let's say, another another rivalry, USC, uh, 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 Southern California, and UCLA. And they're just the regular old, uh, they bring Brent Musburger back. And it's just the regular old, you know, hey, I'm kicking it to you now. And Brent, I've got a lot Brent of- Musburger talking to all those USC girls. Yeah, and I've got a lot of money on the game, baby. And so- as opposed to watching the Manning cast, I'm going to watch the Manning cast. I think that means more eyeballs. So does that help ESPN initially as Disney? Yes, but you get down the line and it helps you in your next contract negotiation. By the time the next contract negotiation comes, though, the deals are going to be so disparate that I think the Big Ten, when the next round of conference realignment comes, is going to gobble up 
the schools that the SEC wants. We, you and I know, Dave. You know who, you know who both school, you know who both conferences really want right now over anybody else. The two schools. Who? UNC and Virginia. Both schools want North Carolina and Virginia desperately. Where do you think they're going right now? If both conferences come calling, both are going to the Big Ten. And Why? Why the Big Ten has it because the Big Ten payout is so much better. The payout to be in the Big Ten. Not to put you on the spot, better. but what are the dollar? What are the difference in the dollar figures? Not to put you on the spot, and if you don't uh, off your head, we can do the research. I, I don't per I, school. Per school. Well, I can't go per school. I have to go total for a second. But they're distributed mostly evenly. But okay, so the Big Ten signed a seven-year deal worth seven billion dollars. So they're getting a billion dollars a year. The NCAA signed a 10-year deal worth $3 billion before they added Texas and Oklahoma. So now you have the Big Ten is dividing. Now now with Oregon and Washington, the Big Ten is dividing a billion a year by 18 teams, whereas the SEC is dividing three uh, is dividing 300 million a year by 16 teams. That's much bigger payout per school. As a matter of fact, Oregon and Washington accepted less money to go into the Big Ten. And by all accounts, they're going to still be bringing in more money than SEC schools next year. And this is, um, by the way, this is just for the next seven years. Then the Big Ten gets to go back to the drawing board and renegotiate in seven years for a bigger deal. Now, Dave, I will tell you this. I think, now I think it's a good business move to do this. You may think it's a bad business move, but I feel like the job of a company is to create the perception that it's worth more than it is, right? Mm Mm-hmm. The Big Ten has created the perception that it's worth more than it is. It's not worth $7 billion, okay? Because guess what? CBS gets the third best Big Ten game of the week. That's what CBS paid for. Okay, let me me jump in there. We visited with Greg Sankey, and he said something, and he he always says something within the 15-minute window that we have him. And I would like to think it was because I ask good questions, but it maybe it's just because he likes redheaded guys and he's like, Hey, I'm going to pass this information to you. So I was the only one that, that we were, we reported that we were not talking about federal legislation of NIL anytime soon. Like he started talking and nobody had asked him that to my knowledge, correct me if I'm wrong, but he, he said, well, you got to worry about the midterm elections. And then you've got the real presidential elections. And I'm just like, we're not, so we're not talking weeks or months. We're talking years. And he's like, yeah, that's pretty much where we are. I thought he dropped a little bit of knowledge on us. Maybe I got lucky. Maybe it was a good question. Maybe he just likes Dave. But he said, well, kind of want to see how those pay out. Um, so I wonder if there are stipulations in the contract based on ratings. I'm totally conspiracy theory in this, okay? But the way he said it made me wonder. So while you're probably right now, and it's hard for me to argue, I think there's a possibility in five to seven years we're having a different conversation and the Big Ten's not as rich as you might think it's going to be. You don't have to be rich to go to Rick Terry Jewelry Design. They want to be your jeweler. They have affordable game day jewelry and basketball season is ongoing. They've got the fire opals that would be awesome. For Christmas presents, if you know anybody in your family, especially the ladies that uh, absolutely love the balls, that's RickTerryJewelry.com. RickTerryJewelry.com. Support our sponsors. That's why we're here. And that affordable game day jewelry, the fire opals are awesome. So what about that? Could we be having, it's within the realm of possibility, right? We could be having a different discussion about the amount of money that's paid out five, seven, ten years from now. Are we sure Greg Sinke didn't say that because he has to say that because he's trying to save face and he is hoping against, and, and, yeah, are we sure he's not hoping against hope that a deal gets done? And but, now what? Very fair. Here's the long-term prospect. Cause this happened by the way, with the NBA, people talk about how the NBA is so massively overvalued. They're right. But you give credit to the NBA for getting that deal for signing those deals. So the NBA's philosophy is we'll fleece the networks now, create a giant bubble. And then when the time comes where we're let, someone's left holding the bag, we'll just make sure we're not the ones holding the bag and we'll renegotiate another deal. So I think that's the Big Ten's model. So what, because what's going to happen in seven years, I can tell you this when the Big Ten comes up for another round of negotiations, 
the networks are going to look at what ESPN is getting from the SEC, which is going to be amazing. And they're going to be like, we're not getting that from you guys. CBS isn't getting that to call the third bet. CBS is paying what ESPN is paying for all the SEC to cover the Illinois Purdue game on a Saturday, you know, things like that. Like they are way overpaying for this, but if they're overpaying, that means the big 10 negotiated well and is getting a good deal out of this. So what's going to happen is in seven years, it's possible, Dave. I don't think it is because I've never seen this happen before. But do you think it's possible the bubble will be so inflated the networks will come back to the Big Ten and say, we're not paying you what we paid you this time. We need more assurances or more promises from you if you want us to give you this type of deal again. And then the Big Ten will be able to deliver. I, I continually think that all these sports numbers like Shohei Otani, that they're going to start to settle. But it's I've been saying that for 10 years and they keep going up. So I've been thinking if you ask me, I would say yes, but I don't know if it's ever going to happen or not. And what happens when, and, and here's the weird thing. This is kind of a, on a more global and macro scale, but American colleges are still the hub across the globe. People across the world come to America for college. So you're starting, the Big Ten is a bunch of AAU schools. You're starting to see there's a strong possibility that college football and college sports will have a global reach in the future because so many people not from America come to college in America and then go back and leave America to go wherever they're from when they, when they're done. And the big 10 is an AAU uh, conference. I wonder if they're thinking about a global reach to supplement their, these are things that they have that the sec without a bunch of AAU schools doesn't have. They have some Texas and Florida, I think are AAU schools and a few others, but the entire big 10 is AAU. And uh, I'm just saying, it's an interesting thought. Um, I, I also think that the foundation of the Big Ten, and let me tell you why, and I don't know that you and I have actually spoken about this. Uh, go ahead and click that like and subscribe for me. We want to bring some more people in. Uh, be sure and share, too. Uh, if you want to share on social media, we absolutely love that. Um, it, the foundation for the Big Ten's plan is flawed, and we haven't discussed this before, but I'm going to tell you why. Because back in, in the day when I worked for uh, the mouse and went to an ESPN summit, and I talked to, I like to learn things about business as much as uh, football. And I talked to a TV exec there that he wasn't a little willy nilly reporter like me. I mean, he's a big time dude. They care a lot, a lot about attendance. So when that, when that camera pans up and you see a, an a empty seats, for the UCLA Rutgers game, advertisers see that and that affects them because you can't tell me that there's going to be that many people that are going to fly to see Rutgers across the nation. And you can't tell me there are that many Rutgers fans that are going to fill the stadium because they love UCLA. I think it's foundationally flawed. I think you're going to see a lot of empty seats in some of these games and advertisers are going to back off. So, you may be right in this initial, and as a matter of fact, most everybody agrees with you, including Jimmy Himes, who will join us tomorrow. But I don't think long term that the Big Ten's plan, because they're so spread out across the country, is going to be nearly as profitable as a lot of people. I think they're what here's what I think the Big Ten is banking on. Doesn't matter how how much people advertisers back off or anything like that, those networks are on the hook for that seven billion. Let's assume they're on the hook no matter what happens. Mm -hmm. The Big Ten's philosophy is that with that $7 billion, particularly in an age of NIL, there will be more money for schools to do things that they want to do to their schools, and therefore they won't have to solicit the money from the boosters, and therefore the boosters can spend all the money buying the talent, at which point you will see Rutgers reach a level of talent that they had never reached before, which they are banking will draw more fans in. So what if like four years from now, Dave, just thinking about this four years into these co contracts, the right now, the seven of the 10 most talented schools are in the SEC. What if the Big Ten starts dominating the college football playoff instead of the SEC? You don't think that will spike attendance in the Big Ten by that at that point? Fair point. Fair point. Um, I don't know why that you think. With, and some people have said London NFL games and I, I, I don't. I don't see it ever being an international sport. As a matter of fact, I think college football could be almost as big as the NFL in the States. I don't see it being as big internationally. But you've said that a couple of times. What, 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 why do you think that before we move well, on? Well, I 
specifically the Big Ten again because AAU institutions, which are like specific, like they get like specific academic ratings. These are the these are the peak public colleges in the world. People all over the world go to these schools. They're all in the Big Ten. Whatever a French person thinks about American football, you don't think if they come, if some dude from France wants to go to college in the United States, so they go to Michigan, which is an AAU school for some academics. You don't think they're going to get swept up in the whole American culture of college football with their friends when they're there? And you don't think that's going to stay with them for life? You, you don't think they're going to be like, I love America. I can't do accents. I'm not even going to try. But like. That and it's probably <laughs> offensive. Uh, yeah. <laughs> some people so don't, don't draw like, a French there, accent. There was, do you remember? Who, who's seen Love Actually? Anybody here? The movie Love Who's Actually? What? Who has seen the movie Love Actually? About 20 years ago, literally. Who remembers when the British dude realizes he's more meant for American girls? So he flies to America, and the first night in a bar, he meets three girls and goes home and sleeps with all three of them at once and falls in love with America. That is going to be the feeling of foreigners coming to Big Ten schools for college and then getting swept up in college football. It's going to have the same, it's going to have the same impact on them.